Chapter 5, The Hat Mom was right. Judy Billings didn't spit at me, or say hello, or look at me, or anything in school today. In other words, she ignored me, like every other day. Even when she dropped her pencil on the floor during silent reading, and I picked it up and handed it to her, she didn't say thank you. And my mother was right about the angel stuff, too. From the moment Mrs. Sims said, Good morning, angels, and we all answered, Good morning, Mrs. Sims, you could feel the angel buzz in the air. Darren Tapp, who never says please or thank you, raised his hand and said, Mrs. Sims, may I please go to the bathroom? And when Darren came back, Missy Haverbeck, who was the shyest person in class, whispered to him as he went past her desk, Your fly is open. All day long, pleases and thank yous and pardon me's were flying around like bees at a picnic. A lot of who did it's, too. Because from the first minute, all eyes were on Mrs. Sims' desk. Sitting right there was an apple. A really big red apple. A really big red polished apple. Buffed to a shine like it was a new car. Whispers raced up and down the aisles. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Nobody knew. Except me. As the whispers were flying around, I was doing my usual thing in my seat behind Judy Billings, staring at her perfect uncovered right ear. I started to notice something. The perfect curve at the top of her ear was getting pink, then red. The whispers were flying and Judy Billings was blushing. Aha, I thought, the apple came from her. Some of Judy Billings' blush sank into my chest. We shared a secret. I closed my fist and made a vow. Nothing, nothing, not a hundred spiders or torture by tickling or ten Gerald Willises would ever make me rat her out. During silent reading, Mrs. Sims was writing something. It was hard to concentrate on my book. I kept looking up at her. So did everybody else. We were all wondering the same thing. Is she writing something good about me? Perfect in every way. I kept remembering what Judy Billings said about angels yesterday. And that's what we were today. Perfect in every way. We sat straight in our chairs and raised our hands for every question and stood to give our answers and were quiet as mice the rest of the time. I kept reminding myself to keep my lip buttoned and not blurt out stuff like yesterday. Only Joey was bad. He kept making noises and funny faces. He was trying to make us laugh, but nobody did. Even in the lunchroom, we were perfect. Everybody smiled at the lunch ladies and said thank you whenever they handed us something. And everybody chewed with mouths shut, except Joey. Then came after lunch recess. It was a warm and sunny day, but really windy. Swings were flapping when nobody sat on them. Basketball shots were curving. Besides the wind, everything was going along pretty normal until a yellow baseball cap came flying onto the playground. On the other side of the fence, a lady in a sweatsuit was stopped, jogging in place. She was pointing to her hat, which had blown off and landed among a bunch of us third graders. For a second, nobody moved. And then it hit all of us at once. Good deed! About ten of us pounced on the hat. There were so many hands, the best I could do was grab somebody's wrist. We were wrenching and pulling and twisting ten different ways. I got it! I got it! Let go! I was first! I was first! Ow! Suddenly, we all snapped apart like a broken wishbone. Eddie Shank was holding the rim of the cap. Diana Briggs was holding the rest. Somebody said, "Uh Uh-oh. Everybody just stared at the hat pieces, except Joey, who was laughing. A screech came from the sidewalk. You little hoodlums! The jogger lady kicked the chain-link fence and started running. Mrs. Sims was standing in the doorway, watching. Silence in the classroom. The two pieces of the yellow hat sat on Mrs. Sims' desk. In between them was the apple. That was disgraceful, said Mrs. Sims. Very unangelic behavior. Judy Billings raised her hand. Mrs. Sims didn't call on her, but Judy stood up and spoke anyway. But I didn't do it. I was just watching. It sounded like she might cry. Mrs. Sims didn't even look Judy's way. Judy sat down. You're all guilty, said Mrs. Sims. You're guilty of doing it. You're guilty of watching and doing nothing to stop it. How many of you went over to the lady and told her you were sorry for the bad behavior of your classmates? No hands. Didn't think so. You're guilty of that, too. She looked at us like we were burnt toast. Angels? Ha! This may be the first class where nobody gets a halo. Angels? You were no better than a pack of sharks after a piece of meat. Joey burst out laughing. Button it, Peterson, said Mrs. Sims. Joey buttoned it. The rest of us stopped breathing. I guess it was all just words, huh? said Mrs. Sims. Angel talk? No angel do? This? She held up half a hat in each hand. Will never happen again. Her eyes went up and down the row, zapping each of us with a yeah-you glare. 
She put the hat halves down. Got it? No sounds came from us. We just boggled and nodded 